Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. It is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go ahead and open up the first Peter chapter four, verse seven. It's gonna be first Peter chapter four, verse seven. Take a couple kids, you become the regulator. You know what I'm saying? I'll be holding this thing down. You know what I'm talking about? I appreciate it too. First Peter chapter 4, verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Uh huh. He said charity. And what's charity? Love. He said love will cover the multitude of sins. All right, keep going. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. All right, he said use hospitality one to another. And he said do that without grudging. All right. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, uh -huh. as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. That's important. He says, that as every man has received the gift. In other words, the things that we have, the things that we, we uh, consider talents or uh, gifts or uh, uh, material things that we own. He said, all these things that we've been given, he said, use these things as stewards. Um, and a steward is somebody who doesn't really own it, but they, 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 they have it and they take care of it. Right, so he said, use that somebody who's just taking care of it, just got a job to do with it. Right, in other words, serve your brother and your sister with all the stuff that you have. Right, keep going. Watch what he said next. This is what we really want to get to. If any man speak, he let said, him if speak. Any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. He said he need to be speaking just like God speaks. Right, that's important for us. It's important that when we come here, we understand the word that we learn it as the Most High God is speaking it. We don't want anybody to be able to come up to us and just take something to us and we just take it and run with it. We want to be able to hear it as the word is spoken. That's why we look at it and we, we you know what I'm saying, we call out scriptures and we listen to what the scriptures say. Right? Otherwise, somebody would just say something and they try to summarize and they mess around and get it wrong. Right? You can get a summary wrong. Alright, but it's important for us to speak the way the most high God speaks. And how can you do that if you don't remember it? Right, that's just something that you have to want. Like the salvation, you just have to want it. Right, it's, it's, the, it's the only way to do it. And to want it, you have to learn how to get it. Right, and then when you learn it, that's why we say uh, you have to. Uh, you, you're gonna be taught and, and and learn. Anyone who's taught and learned in the word, because it's two things. It's not just hearing the word. You get the word. You have to actually learn it. And, and in other words, you have to understand it and remember it. Right, and that's not saying I remember every scripture or how to how to find the scriptures and all that verbatim. But you do have to remember the message. You have to know what it's saying. All right? You have to know the meaning behind it. All right? So that's what we come here to do. It's a lot of repetition, right? It's a lot of repeating the same things. It's a lot of saying that. But for that, like the book said, that's safe for us. Right? You repeat the same thing and it's right. All right? That thing become part of your memory. How are you going to be saved if you don't remember what, what right is? Grab uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Alright, it's 
no way in the world anybody gonna remember something if they don't uh they haven't learned it. They haven't been exposed to it. Right? Everything we do, it all comes by being exposed to it by the most high God, and after that we have to make sure we keep it in memory. Alright? You're not gonna be saved if you don't keep it in memory, if you don't have a message in memory. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, which also ye have received, he said, and wherein ye stand. The gospel which I have preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you. So look at the condition. He said, you are saved by this, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you. Alright? It's important that you remember it. Alright? We have to be able to keep this stuff and retain it. That's why we go over it. That's why the Most High God said, don't forsake the assembling together of yourselves. Alright? Because you go over the word and then you keep it in memory. Once you have it in memory, you can regurgitate it. Then you can speak it and you can speak as the oracle. You don't have to go around here guessing. How you know you saved? I mean, you just know when you know. That's what my pastor used to say. You just, sometimes you just got to know that you know that you know that you know that you know. That's what he used to say. You know, and that thing made sense to me. You know what I'm saying? You look back and it's like, these people didn't know anything. Right? They didn't know a lick of the word. So now you're being saved by your own thoughts. How is that any different than idolatry? Right? It's important for us. We got to look at the word. We got to hold this dear in our hearts. We have to look at it and say, you know what? This means something. And we got to fight through it. Everything that come up, we got to just fight through it. Yeah, it ain't rough. Keep going. Yeah, it got a little harder. Keep going. Right? Keep that thing in memory. It's going to come time. I'm telling you, for me, it, it come time. Man. That's all I got. Man. I just got this word. Stuff get real tough, and I just hear that thing ringing in my head. Keep going. That's all I can do. You know what I'm saying? I get tempted to do some stuff I ain't got no business doing. That thing just pop right in my head. Boy, you going, you'll take your butt going to hell. That thing keep going. Keep moving. All right? We ain't got no time for this stuff, man. We got to be able to put this stuff in our heart and keep pushing. All right? This is Luke chapter 7. Watch this. Keep pushing. You got time. You can't, you know what I'm saying? You can't waste your time trying to, trying to, you know, make sure, you know, everything the way you, you know what I'm saying? What? So one of the things I messed up with early on is I wanted everybody there, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody that was there when, you know what I'm saying, when I used to be who I was, I wanted them there when I changed to. You know what I'm saying? I want to keep everybody around. You know what happened? I kept cussing. Kept lying, kept stealing. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff. Because I'm trying to keep my same circle. Right? I'm trying to keep everything the same. I just wanted to feel the same. It's like, all right. Yeah, but not everybody going to move at the same speed you move. It don't matter what you tell them. Right? You can go up to them with all the, I mean, I mean, the best word you know. You can go up to them. And guess what? It's going to be an excuse. Y'all sure dealt with it too. We'd be hard pressed to find a preacher better than y'all sure. Right? He ran into the same thing. It's uh, Luke chapter 7, verse 31. It's Luke chapter 7, verse 31. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the man, the men of this generation? And to what are they like? Right? So he says, What can I compare the men of this generation to? Right? He's trying to look at it like, What are these people like? He's going to tell you what they like. They're like unto children sitting in the marketplace. He said, These, these boys just like kids. They sitting in the marketplace. And what's the kids in the marketplace saying? And calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you and you have not danced. He said, they like kids sitting in the marketplace, and they like, listen, I just I just sang a song to you. I played my instrument to you. You know what I'm saying? I played some really good music just now, and y'all didn't dance. What else? We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. I sit here and cried and told you a sad story, and 
y'all didn't cry. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we party and y'all don't want to party, you know what I'm saying? If it's a sad time and we sad and crying, y'all don't want to be sad. What do you say? For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say he has a devil. Right? Y'all sure use that. He's saying basically, when I send John the Baptist to y'all, the man didn't eat. You know what I'm saying? He didn't drink. And y'all said the man had a devil. Right? He came in here being strict. He was on top of it. He abstained from all this foolishness. And y'all said the man had a devil. Then what up? The son of man is come eating and drinking. And you say, behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. Right? I come and I eat and I drink. Y'all call me a darn, a darn wine bibber. Y'all say I'm a drunk. Y'all say I'm a gluttonous. I eat too darn much. Y'all say I'm a friend of sinners. That's what y'all sure saying. So he said, how can I please y'all? That's the, basically the point of the story. He said, how can I please y'all? I sing and I dance for y'all. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't dance. You know what I'm saying? After that, I cry and try to try to try to tell y'all a sad story. Ain't nobody moved by it. It's like y'all can't, y'all can't win. Right? Watch what he said. But wisdom is justified of all her children. Right? He said, wisdom is justified. What that means is. You are going to be, the people who walk in the faith um, are, are going to be justified in the sense that they walked in wisdom. So you'll be able to see by the result of what you do that it's wise or not, right? That you are saved or not, right? You can't see it beforehand. He's saying just wait and see. He said wisdom will be justified by our children, right? So the fruit that wisdom produces is going to justify wisdom. Right? Same thing with us. The fruit that we produce is what justifies us. Alright? What else we got? And one of the Pharisees desired, desired that he would eat with him and went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. Uh -huh. And behold, a woman so in the city... So notice that. Who went to who? The Pharisee went to him. Y'all notice that y'all she was not walking around chasing these people? These people chasing him. He's on the move. Everybody who want to talk to him, they coming to him. He just talking. He just talking wide open. Oh, y'all made a crowd. All right, let me talk to y'all. Notice he's not chasing these people. All right? That's important for us because there's a lot of people we hold dear and we just want to save them. We just want to, you know what I'm saying? We want to get them. My brother, I was just in here. We just want to save them. All right? Ain't nothing wrong with it either. But the important thing is that we know what we do. Grab Matthew chapter 25. It's Matthew chapter 25, verse one. Matthew chapter 25 verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps. He said the kingdom of heaven, you know what that's like? That's like ten virgins. And they took some lamps. What else happened? And went forth to meet the bridegroom. Alright, they went forth with their lamp and they're trying to meet the bridegroom. Alright, keep going. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Alright, so you had half of the virgins, they were wise virgins. The other ones, they were foolish virgins. What else? They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. All right, the ones that were foolish, they just grabbed the lamps. They forgot the oil, though. Kept moving. What happened with the other? But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. All right? So you need the oil to keep the, the lamp lit. All right? So they took some extra oil with them. They had wise. Let's hear about it. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. All right, so they was all sleepy. The bridegroom have not come yet. They ready to meet the man. They got their lamps. They need the lamps to be able to get to them. All right? Let's hear it. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes. All right? So they it was midnight. Remember, they sleep. It's the middle of the darn night. A cry comes out. The bridegroom is coming. What up? Go ye out to meet him. Uh -huh. Then all those versions arose and tamed their, trimmed their lamps. All right, so all ten of them arose and they trimmed their lamps. In other words, they had to make sure it was lit properly. All right, what else? And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. So now this is this is ten people. All of them trying to get to, to the goal. All right? Half of them 
don't have what it takes. So they look at the other half and they like, help us out. Now a good Christian, you know what a good Christian would say? You give them your oil. It's better for them to have your oil. I mean, it's better to give than to receive. That's what the book say, right? Let's hear what the book say right here. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Right? The wise one was looking at it, uh, it don't make good sense for me to give you mine. If I give you mine, it's not going to be enough for both of us. That don't make sense. It's only going to be enough for one of us. So how about you, who are unprepared, go where they, they sell it. I mean, just maybe you'll make it back in time. As for me, I'm going to keep moving. I'm headed towards the goal. Let's see if, let's see if y'all sure got mad at that. Let's see. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that and they that were ready with went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Uh huh. After it came also the other virgin, saying, "Lord, Lord, open to us." Uh huh. But he answered and said, "Verily I say unto you, I know you not." He said, "I don't even know y'all." Right? That's the position that we in. A lot of times we sit here running around trying to help everybody else. But when it comes to salvation, you gotta help yourself. When it comes to all this material stuff, you got a little extra money, you know what I'm saying? You got your last dime, you know what I'm saying? Your car is just a bucket, but you need somebody to borrow it. You let them borrow that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Let them have your last dime. Let that thing, that's different. You know what I'm saying? That thing is a whole other story. When it comes to salvation, when it comes to doing right, don't put yourself in a position to do wrong just, just because you want to impress somebody else or you want to get somebody else on your side, right? I mean, I know. See, I know that they'll respect me. All I got to do is just go to this party. And then after I go to that party with them, they'll understand that I'm not judging them. Right? They'll feel comfortable. I'm just like you. I'm a sinner just like you. I'm not judging you. Then he'll start coming to Bible study. Right? Then she, I mean, then she'll start praying with me if you do the whole thing. Now, that thing ain't a good strategy. You ain't gonna see no, you ain't gonna see y'all sure chasing nobody into no place where people sinning. That don't make no sin. Alright? You just live how you live. Worship the God that you worship. He people will come. These people, give me uh, give me John chapter 4. Only reason we do stuff like that, we don't know what we don't are talking about. This is John chapter 4. You're going to have to help me find it. I want to say uh, John chapter 4. What's the last verse? Four, 54. John chapter 4, I need mean, like verse at least 20, 21 maybe. The woman believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem. Give me uh, 18. This is John chapter 4, verse 18. For thou hast had five husbands. Uh huh. Okay. We'll this, do 17. This is John chapter 4, verse 17. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Mm -hmm. And Yahushua has said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. All right. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. That's book. You hear what he said? He said, you look at it, you right. She said, I have no husband. She didn't say, I have a husband and these other ones. She said, I have no husband. He's like, yeah, you said it right. You right, you ain't got no husband. Because you had five of them, and you got one right now. She tried to lie and say, no, nah, I ain't got no husband. He said, no, nah, you right. You ain't got no, you said it right. You don't know you said it right. You right. You ain't got no husband. You got one right now. And you had five before that. And none of them are your husband. Right? You divorced one of them and then divorced four other ones. Only that first one was yours. Right? Then after that, you got to adore another one. None of them yours. You divorced the real one and the rest of them ain't really was never yours. Right? Give them book. She looking at him like, she gonna think, look, after that, she gonna be like, I perceive you a prophet. <laughs> Crazy after that, she like, you know all that. Let's see. Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband. In that thou said, truly. The woman said unto him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I read this thing a little different. When I hear that, bro, <laughs> yo, she was messing with her. He's like, yeah, you right. You know what I'm saying? He got, that's how I look at it. I don't know. Maybe I, that's just my imagination. When I imagine, I look at it. I don't imagine it like no people. Yes, you said truly. No, he's like, no, you right. 
You right now, you ain't got no dark husband. You know what I'm saying? You had five of them. Like, tell me that's not like lightweight like clowning. You know what I'm saying? Like, you had five of them. And the one you got now ain't yours. How she, you, you in her position, right? Let's imagine a Christian, just a nice Christian lady who just had a couple husbands, right? But she's a nice God-fearing woman, right? Let her tell you, right? So you, you, you put her, imagine her, somebody saying that to her. She going crazy. She going darn crazy, right? It's important that we look at this stuff. See how the man deal with people. Keep going. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, uh -huh. and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour comes when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. All right, she tried to ask him quick because she knew he was a prophet after he, she, you know what I'm saying, opened up her whole life to her. She was like, no, I think you a prophet. So he's like, uh, you know what I'm saying, where are we supposed to be worshiping that? Right? She talking, to, she talking to the man about worship. Right? She said, our fathers worship here. But y'all talking about we got to worship in Jerusalem. Right? He looked at her head like, uh, don't even worry about it. Hour coming, y'all ain't going to worship neither one of them places. Right? Let's see. Ye worship, ye worship, ye know not what. He said, ye worship, ye know not what. Translation, you don't know what you worship. Right? That's what it comes down for us. We run in our mouths, we do things, we haven't learned the book, and we don't know what we're worshiping. That's why it's important the way we started off. Right? We have to speak as the oracles. A lot of times we don't know what. You know what I'm saying? When we when we first started, it was a period of time we were saying stuff, found out it was wrong, saying stuff, found out it was wrong, saying stuff, found out it was wrong, improvising, taking guesses. It came to a point where we were like, you know what? Let's only use the Bible. We talk to people on Facebook, I'm only going to quote the Bible. Right? Somebody asks us a a question about the Bible, I'm only going to quote the Bible, right, and by doing that, we saw, we wanted to say something, you know what I'm saying, it was like, it was like, you asked me a question, oh, yeah, how does this going to work, and this, that, and other, oh, yeah, I know that, you know what I'm saying, the guy, he loves you, and this, that, and other, da, da, da. that's what you want to say, then it's like, mm, you know what, I'm only going to use the Bible, let me find that in the Bible, and then you find out, oh, that thing ain't nowhere, somebody asked you, so where did Lucifer get kicked out of heaven, oh, don't, yeah, see, he was the highest angel. That's what you want to say. Then it's like, let me find that in the Bible. Then you go look for it. It's like, oh, I can't find that thing nowhere. That's how you clean a lot of this mess up. You force yourself to only speak as the book speak. You want to, you want to say something about the Bible to somebody? Find it in the book first. And just say it just like it's just like it's written. Guarantee that thing. Clean your butt up. You'll be sitting there like, yeah, a lot of this stuff is fall. A lot of this, a lot of this stuff that we've been taught, that thing just fall. That only makes sense. It's misrepresented or sometimes it's absolutely false, right? That's just how you got to audit it, right? You got to go back and you got to check it and make sure everything is still in place. We get to moving too fast thinking we know stuff and our minds just start playing tricks on us. We can't do that, right? We came here for some law. Let's, 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 where did we leave off last week? Exodus 32, verse 35. So, 33. Yeah. Exodus 33, verse 1. Just a recap. Keep in mind, we came to Mount Sinai. We was about three months in, right? So we got rescued from Egypt. We was in the wilderness for three months. And then we came to Mount Sinai. You know what I'm saying? That's where the Most High God spoke to us from on top of the mountain. Then Moses went up there. After we stopped him, we was like, eh, take it easy. We don't want to hear nothing else. You'll mess around and kill us. Most High God said, you spoken well. Right? So Moses went up there and heard the rest of the commandments. He brought the commandments back to us. He gave us the commandments. We said, you know what? Everything you say, we'll do it. He sealed the covenant with us. Right? Then after that, Moses went back up there for 40 days, 40 nights. Right? So remember, we were three months in, 40 days, 40 nights. Now we're approaching about five months. Right? We're in the fourth month at that point. Right? So now, Moses come back down. We had a golden calf, but we thought, we, you know what I'm saying, Moses was good at dead, right? We had a golden calf. He's like, man, make, we like, look, 
Aaron, make us our gods. Right? Make us a god. You know what I'm saying? We saw Moses. Moses went up there. The Most High God was just talking to us. We thought we was all about to die. So he went up there right in the scariest part of the scary part. And he'd been up there 40 days, 40 nights. I didn't even see him take a meal up there. Right? So it's like, yeah, I think, I don't know if Moses is coming back. Go ahead and make us a God. They want to see something. Right? They need an image. Remember, they didn't see God. Moses told us in Deuteronomy, they didn't see no similar to Right? So they didn't see God. They just need something to see. All they saw was Moses. Moses go up there. They thought he's dead. So they get an image. Make an image. Start partying. They sacrifice to the Most High God in the form of this image, though. Most High God send Moses back down there. Moses get down there. He is like, man, this is a darn mess. Broke the Ten Commandments on the tablets of stone. Broke them things down. He called. He said, who's for God? The Levites. The Levites, his brethren, they chose up and they said, we are and then they went out there and they slaughtered about 3,000 people, right? And they killed 3,000 of our people as a judgment for God because we disobeyed them when he just told us not to do. We ended up doing it because we weren't paying attention, right? We didn't keep those things in memory, all right? So then, after that, Moses, uh, Moses started, to, started to deal with the people. And that's pretty much how we left off with uh, verse 33, I mean chapter 33 of Exodus. So we're going to pick up here. I'm sorry, chapter 32 of Exodus. So we're going to pick up here in chapter 33 as he continues to deal with the people. Remember, the Levites started to slaughter, kill folks. And after they killed folks, uh, the Most High God said, you know, consecrate yourselves. You know, until he bestowed a blessing on you today. We're going to talk a little more about what that blessing ends up being. Um, and now, you know what I'm saying, he's dealing with the rest of the people. So this is Exodus chapter 33, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence. Thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. Uh -huh. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, and the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. All right. All those are, are descendants of uh, a man named Canaan, which they call Canaanites because they're his descendants. All right, so they all have their own individual names, their own individual tribes and stuff, but that's what they all represent. Another word for them are Amorites. All right, keep going. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up into the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Mm -hmm. And when the people heard these evil things, they mourned, and no man did put on him his ornaments. No man did what? Put on him his ornaments. So, who remembers how the, the, the golden calf was made? Anybody remember what they pulled off to make it? It made out of gold. Yeah, everybody had to take off their earrings and stuff. Right? Remember, hey, I did, like, make us a god. Right? And Aaron was like, all right. You know what I'm saying? Give me earrings. And they said, the women... The, the boys and the girls took off their earrings. You know what I'm saying? Handed them over. And he melted it all down and made a, a golden calf out of it. Right? So now they get to the point, and read that again. What verse was that? Four. This is verse four. Most high God had already dealt with them. Some folks had died. Then he just gave them some bad news. Like, I ain't going up with y'all. I'll mess around and kill y'all. Y'all y'all stiff-necked people. <laughs> people heard that stuff. And then let's see how they reacted to it. And when the people heard these evil things, they mourned, and no man did put on him his ornaments. Right? Remember, they had took him off to make this golden cap. He said, no man put on his ornaments. What's the next verse? For the Lord had said unto Moses, say unto the children of Israel, ye are stiff-necked people. I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore now, put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. Right? The Most High God told them, take off your ornaments. In other words, take off your jewelry. Right? Take off your jewelry. He said, and do that. That way I'll know what to do with you. He said, I don't even know what to do with you right now. He said, take it off. Right? When we read stuff in the book, we have no idea the context and the history behind it. When we read stuff in the New Testament, and we see this stuff. When we see Timothy tell us about, grab uh, grab uh, uh, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. All right, we don't have context because we don't understand the history. We don't understand our law. We don't understand where this stuff comes from. 
everything that we're looking at, a lot, I ain't going to say everything, a lot of the stuff that we read in the New Testament, it has a, a symbolism or it has it has a history behind it or something, a message behind it that's tied to the law. That's lost if you don't know the law. All right? That's why it's important for us to be able to identify these things and we keep going over them. The more you go over it, the more it all clicks. It starts to come together. It's like, oh, I get it now. All right? The Bible don't do what the Bible doesn't do is it don't spell it all out for you. All right? It don't connect all the dots for you. You just kind of got to look at it and understand it and know. That's how the Most High God can know that it's given to you by the Most High God. You don't even realize it. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Okay, so this is this First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. He said, in like manner also, women should adorn themselves in what? Modest apparel. Modest apparel. With shamefastness uh -huh. and sobriety. Uh -huh. Not with broided hair uh -huh. or gold uh -huh. or pearls or costly array. Right, so Christians, when they look at that, they look at that and they're like, you know, that... See, God is not talking to all women. He just he was talking to a particular group of women at a particular time. See, brother, let me tell you something. Back in uh, 70, uh, 70 AD, because he was there, the, the pastor was there. Back in 70 AD, you have women who, I mean, they overdid it. You know what I mean? I mean, I did. I mean, they just had, and they, they worshiped their jewelry. They start making up all these stories to make it where, you know what I'm saying? Because you anything they say, you're like, well, no. Yeah. Women do that today, you know what I'm saying? But they ain't gonna say that. They're trying to make it so. I mean, they they painted demons on their face, and their earrings was Lucifer himself, and they put it in. They try to make it so evil that that it was just so different than what they're doing. Guess what? You won't read though. Nothing that they talk about. You'll never read it. Only thing you gonna read is he said take them off. When you don't have a context, you like this don't make sense. Why would God out of nowhere just say women can't wear jewelry? Right? Out of nowhere. Why would he say that? Grab Isaiah for me. It ain't out of nowhere. We just saw it in Exodus. Exodus just told us. Right? We just read it right in Exodus. He just said it. He just told us. He said, y'all strip off your order. That way I know what to do with y'all. He was upset with us. When he was upset with us, he told all of us, take off your ornaments. All your little jingling things, take them things off. What you mean? Right? And the history even behind that, we got to the point of sinning by using those ornaments. We had gold earrings in our ear. We took them off and we made a God out of it. We made an image out of it. Right? So then our punishment was take them off. Get rid of them. You gonna make a God out of some stuff I bless you with. And then use it to sin against me. Take them off. Get rid of them. So we see it in the New Testament. What do you think it's referring to? He trying to let us know. Humble yourself like you did in the wilderness. This is Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah chapter 3. Give me verse uh, 10. Watch this. It's all through the book, but we just miss it. There ain't nobody ever taught us this stuff. Only thing they going to teach us about a particular set of women at a particular time that you can't never find in the book. They say it two different places in the book. Peter and and, uh, and, and Paul were talking about the same women. <laughs> Stop lying. Say ye to the righteous. He said, say ye to the righteous. This is Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. Watch this. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him. Uh-huh. For they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Uh-huh. Woe unto the wicked. Uh-huh. It shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hand shall be given him. Uh-huh. As for my people, children are their oppressors. He said, as for my people, guess who's running the show? These darn kids. That's that what he said. He said, as, did I just make that up? Say it. As for my people, children are their oppressors. You got these kids. These, these parents are scared of their kids. Some of them outward scared of their kids, right? Some of them just like, my kid will really slap me upside my head, right? Some of them scared their kids just like, I mean, I just don't want her to be mad at me. I just don't want him to be upset with me. He may leave. I ain't got time for none of this stuff. You do what you need to do. The kids ain't about to oppress us. That's crazy. That don't make sense. That's prophecy. I read it in the book and I'm still going to let it happen. That ain't going to work for me. Ain't going to work for me. Let me tell you, it's the rule. This is how the most high God said it's going to happen. You choose. I 
kick any of my kids out. And my mind is one and three. They but can go. Right now. You know what I'm saying? Hey, grandma, I'll take them. I'll pay her too. I'll pay child support to my mom. <laughs> Whoever pick them up. You know what I'm saying? I still take care of them. You ain't got to come back to my house. Not until you ready to do what I'm saying. That's my house. Most of God gave it to me. I ain't no wicked ruler. I know I'm just. You know what I'm saying? When I get there and I, I serve, I'm going to serve my kids and my wife. Yeah, guess what? You ain't about to turn my household to, into a bad prophecy. That's crazy. That doesn't make sense to me. It is never going to happen. That's book. Keep right. Children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Uh-oh. He said, children are they... You know what? It was a man, right? You were there. We was at a radio show. This Hebrew dude came in. I mean, he... I mean, from Africa. He, we got the accent and everything. He up in there. See, you have to do what you have to do. You know what I'm saying? Got the African accent. So everybody know he real, right? He was like, yeah, man, we we the Hebrews. So everybody was like, oh, that's right, huh? And he he got an app. I've been saying this thing for years. You know what I'm saying? Same same group of people. They ain't listen to me. But he came in there with an the accent. It's like, oh, we Hebrews. Okay. So I'm like, all right. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's cool. You know what I'm saying? We got it. After that, he is like, see, God wants the woman to 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 have to he said God wants the roles to reverse for the woman. You know what I'm saying? For the woman to run thing. And so I'm looking at him like, nah, nah. And so he's in there telling them pretty much the woman's supposed to run things now and the men are not. Right? This is a new age that's coming. Right? A new age where everything kind of flip around. So we looking at him like, huh? Then you think about this prophecy. What does it say? Children are their oppressors and women rule over them. He said, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. You just tell me if this is a, if this is a blessing that he's pronouncing on people. Or is he pronouncing curses on people? Right? Is he, is he sitting there pronouncing, saying that this is, these are all the good things that's going to happen? I mean, because you let this other dude tell it. And this is a new age. This is how it's supposed to be. Right? Why we can't find this in a positive context then? Why we can't find ever where it's a, a woman going to rule a man in a positive context? From the beginning of the book to the end, you'll never find it. You'll never find it where a woman was said to rule over a man in it's a positive context. I'll tell you what you will find. You will find where Paul tells us, don't let a woman usurp authority over a man or teach a man. You will find in the Garden of Eden, that as a punishment to Eve, he said, a man will rule over you. Right? You will find this right here. Alright? All these different things we look at, it's important for us to understand what the book is saying. It doesn't make any sense in the world for us to sit here and let somebody tell us it's okay that a woman should, should run and rule when the book is saying the opposite. When he's saying that's a curse that I'm telling you. This is a curse. A woman is going to rule over you. That your children are going to press you. And we just let that thing rock. Nah, it's not us. That can't happen. Keep going. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of your path. Who are talking about when he said they must lead thee? The woman? No, he ain't talking about the woman. He said they, was, they which lead, lead thee cause thee to err. He's talking about these pastors. He's talking about these people that's telling us these lies. Saying this stuff is okay. Saying it's all the same. Right? Keep going. It calls us to err. Because they don't know the book. The Lord stands up to plead and stands to judge the people. Uh-huh. Watch the Lord, this. The, so Lord, the Lord stands up to plead. And then on top of that, he stands up to judge the people. Right? Watch what he said next. And the prince is thereof, for ye have eaten up the... Wait. Where was I? That's right here. The Lord stands up. Okay. And the Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people. Uh huh. And the princes thereof, for ye have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. Uh huh. What mean, what mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor? Uh huh. Says the Lord God of hosts. Yep. Moreover, the Lord said, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk Look with stretched this. forth necks. He next. said, Because the daughters of Zion are what? Are, are haughty. haughty. And they walk out with what? With stretched forth necks. He said they walk out with stretched forth necks. You know what that means? They stuck up. 
They just sitting there just walking. He said the women of Zion are Hebrew women. Yeah, they just walking down like this. Just stuck up. Right? He said because they haughty and they walking around just stuck up, what's going to happen to them? And walk with stressed forth necks and wanton eyes walking uh -huh. and min mincing as they go. And walking making, and mincing as they go. They switch. And, going. and making a tinkling with their feet. Making a tinkling with their feet. You know what that means? They got on jewelry. They got all that stuff. They're making, they making noise with it. Watch. Keep going. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. Uh-huh. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet. Y'all didn't, didn't believe me when they all talking about tinkling? He said, you sitting there making all that? No, you ever seen a girl with all the accessories on? They come in and all you hear, clean, clean, clean. You hear all the accessories clean together and all that? That's what he thought. We've always been like that. That's nothing new for us. We've always been that. Right? He said, these women at this time, he's like, man, because y'all walking around like that, right? This is the ancient days. He's talking about our ancient people. He's like, because y'all walking around like that and y'all hiding, y'all sinners walking around with wanton eyes. In other words, you looking, you looking and seducing people everywhere you go because you're doing all this stuff. Watch this. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. Mm -hmm. In that day, the Lord will take away the bra the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their calls and their round tires like the moon. Uh huh. The the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers. The bonnets and the ornaments and of the legs and the hand and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink, and instead of a girl a rent, instead of a girdle a rent, and instead of a well set hair baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a grinding, a girding of sackcloth, and you burning instead me, of beauty. You just tell me that a lot of our women ain't having a lot of these same problems. Right? And we look at it, this is what the book is telling us. So now when we fast forward and we look at the New Testament, we said, no, just take it off. It means something else now. It doesn't mean the same thing to us. Right? But nobody's giving us this context and like, oh yeah, this is why, you know what I'm saying, this is the history of what's going on here. You have multiple places where the man told you, these tinkly things, these ornaments, this, this jewelry that y'all wearing, I want it off of you. Now the New Testament is saying the same thing because we need to be humble. It's not that we having the same problem that they was having there. He's saying, I'm trying to keep you from that. I'm telling you that when women and men wore these things previously, it was a problem. If we know our history, we can say, you know what? I'm avoiding that. Right? That's important for us. It means something. This is just stuff that we bypass. Right? We just look at it all. No, that's not talking to me. If you look at the book and the whole time you're saying that's not talking to me, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You better be looking for that thing to be talking to you. Every time y'all show open up his mouth, man, that thing got to be me. And if it ain't me, that thing might have been me. Or it might be me later. That's why, I look, that's why when we talk about the Pharisee, I ain't never ever going to be talking about the Pharisee. All oh, those stupid Pharisees. All oh, those stupid Israelites. They didn't pay attention. No, I ain't got time for that stuff. We look at them, we try to defend them. This is why the Pharisees did it. They did it because they were looking at this, that, and the other thing. Right? They didn't know this or that and the other. We could all make that same mistake. We have to look at it like that. We have to look at it that we can all make that same mistake. Otherwise, what you learning from the book? How you going to avoid it when it come up? Right? That's important for us. Alright? Grab a... Uh, grab a... Uh, what we want to do? Go back to Exodus? Yeah, let's go back to Exodus. This is Exodus 33, verse 6. Let me try to shoot through this stuff. It's Exodus 33, verse 6. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount by the Mount Horeb. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. Alright, so when they say tabernacle there, we're we gonna get into the tabernacle that we talked about, that we're gonna build. We're gonna get into that. But 
when he say tabernacle here, it's just saying the tent. So he had a tent, and he pitched a tent outside the camp, right? And then he went into it. This is where he's about to talk to the Most High God. But watch how the people look at him. Watch it. Should be Exodus chapter 33, about verse 7, verse 8. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of congregation. Uh -huh. And it came to pass that every one which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of congregation, which was without the camp. Uh -huh. And it came to pass when Moses went out into the tabernacle, that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. So notice that. When Moses got up and go out there, it just told you every man who's looking for the Most High God, they go out there. It didn't tell you what everybody did when they went out there, though. But when Moses went out there, what did everybody do? They stood up and every man at his tent door. Everybody like this when Moses go out there. Right? They go out to the door. Moses out the door. You know what I'm saying? They out there peeking out the door, kids. You know what I'm saying? Trying to see. Everybody was looking. When Moses started walking out there, everybody wanted to see. Watch how these people look. This is the honor that Moses had. And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. All right? They look at it, they know if Moses go up there, something about to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? I go out there, I just go out there, you know what I'm saying? I just start praying. No nothing happened, no sky don't change, no cloud come down. You know what I'm saying? Just me running my mouth, praying, I get up, go, you know what I'm saying, do my thing. When Moses go out there, everybody looking. They like, because they ready to see. You know what I'm saying? We didn't see Moses do some amazing stuff already. I want to see what's about to happen when Moses go over there. As soon as he get over there, cloud drop. Right? They looking like, oh, this dude. You know what I'm saying? They look, that's how they honor Moses. Because Moses, he gave Moses that. You know what I'm saying? He gave him that. Watch it. Keep going. Watch how you people do. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle. As Moses entered in, what happened? The cloudy pillar descended and uh -huh. stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. Oh, he talked with him. And then what? And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. Uh-huh. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. Every man did what? Rose up and worshipped. After they saw that cloud, every man started bowing down. Right there at their tent door. Everybody started bowing down. All right? Keep going. Watch this. And this Lord, is Moses. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaks unto his friend. Oh, and the Most High God spoke to him face to face. Just like he was speaking to a friend. Right? That has to mean something to us. Right? These people looked at him. They was like Moses walking over there. They peek out the window. They paying attention. They want to see what's going on. What's about to happen. Cloud drop. He walk in. He start talking to God face to face. And you know what they do? They bow down and worship. Do they see God? Who they see? They see Moses. They see the cloud. That's all they see. And guess who set it up that way? Most high. God. All right? Grab uh, Exodus chapter 7 for me real quick. Then we're going to uh, grab Hebrews chapter 1. It's Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. Right? He get up. Moses, you know what I'm saying? You know, Moses, he's probably, hey, you he can just imagine, you know what I'm saying? Moses, he's just like going to the bathroom one time. But they think, I mean, he headed in that direction. Because, you know, when they had, when we had to go to the bathroom, when we was in the wilderness, we couldn't use the bathroom inside the camp. You know what I'm saying? We had to do our business. We had to go outside the camp. You know what I'm saying? So the tabernacle of congregation where the Most High God met Moses, that was outside the camp too. You know what I'm saying? So you can just imagine Moses one time. He's like, you know what I'm saying? I got to go to the bathroom. But everybody, they don't know. They just looking like, you know what I'm saying? Moses look back. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what y'all doing? Oh, no, I'm just using the bathroom. I'm like, oh, all right. You know what I'm saying? They go back. And then you just kind of imagine something like that. But Moses go, everybody looking at him like, what you doing? Then he go and he get to the, 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 the tent. You know what I'm saying? Once he get out there, they just waiting to see that cloud hit. You know how amazing that be? You know what I'm saying? We'd be in the same boat. We'd be sitting there looking like, you know what I'm saying? Like the crib. Look at God. You know what I'm saying? But all we see is Moses in a cloud. Moses walk in there, guess what we want to do? We gotta worship. You know what I'm saying? 
know what I'm saying? That's Moses talking to God right now. We got to worship. What are we going to do? Right there at the tent door, the people worship. Watch what Exodus chapter 7 said. He set it up just like that. This is Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God unto Pharaoh. He said, I made thee what? A God to Pharaoh. He said, I made thee a God unto Pharaoh. Why do you think when the people, when the people saw Moses was gone? Right? They like, where's Moses at? I don't know what happened to Moses. They like, we don't know what's become of Moses. You know what I'm saying? We have no idea. And guess what they asked for it next? When they realized Moses was out of the picture, what was the first thing they asked for? God. They asked for somebody to make him a god. Because the most high God made Moses to be as a god to Pharaoh. These people were the same. They, they was in the same boat as Pharaoh. They saw it just like Pharaoh. So that's how they saw Moses. Keep going. And Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. He said Moses is going to be a god to Pharaoh. And Aaron his brother. He going to be the prophet. Hebrews chapter 1. These are little details that, you know what I'm saying, you don't look into the book. How you going to know this stuff? All right? How you going to understand what's going on with Yahushua if you don't do this? You don't know this. You never understood that, that Moses was like a god to these people. Right? He was like a god to these people. How you understand when the, why, why the Bible is relating Yahushua to Moses? Right? It starts to make sense after you do that. That's why these people don't understand the Trinity. You know what I'm saying? They're talking about some Trinity. It's three, three separate persons all equal into one guy. That ain't good math. They don't make no darn sense. You know, three separate nothing. Y'all just don't understand what he is and who he is. Y'all don't understand Moses. If you understood Moses, that thing would make perfect sense to you. Moses was like a god unto the people. People didn't see, when they when they saw, when they, somebody wanted to talk to God, who they had to talk to? Moses. You want to see God. Who are you looking at? Moses. Hebrews want to tell you. This is Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. God who at sundry times and in diverse when manners. Say sundry. Sundry is like various. Right? It's like saying various. You know what I'm saying? So God who at various times and what? And in diverse manners. In a whole that diverse. That just means different. Right? So, so he's saying God who in various times and in different ways, well, keep going. Various times and different ways. Spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Right? He said, in many times and in different ways, he spoke to us by prophets. But, hath in these, uh, by prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed there. Heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Right? So he said, it's been a whole lot of prophets at different times and a lot of different ways that they didn't spoke to us. But in these days, this man speaking to us by his son. He's like, it's different. Right? And he made his son the heir over all things. Watch this. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. And the what? Express image of his person. So he's saying, this son, who he's speaking to us by, is the express image of God's person. Right? So when Moses was walking up, who saw God? Nobody. Right? But when you see him walk up, you start worshiping. Because Moses was an image of God. That's why when Moses was taken out of the picture, he was up there 40 days, 40 nights. They didn't know if he was going to come back. First thing they asked for is, make us a God. Moses is gone. Therefore, we need a God. Right? Because Moses was God in their eyes. So now you have Yahushua on the scene, who's the express what? Image of his person. Keep going. And upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. This is Colossians chapter 1. Because I don't know what express the image means. You know what I'm saying? That can mean anything. You let a Christian. No, no, no. Say that can mean anything. I want Colossians chapter 1. Maybe it'll be a little bit more clear for me. 
You know what I'm That's our law. You know what I'm saying? You got to have at least two or three witnesses. You can't just go up in there and just saying something you by yourself. You better have somebody with you. And you better not put your hand to a darn lie. That's against our law. How you going to use the law and be it right in one place and then be, be wrong in another place? You're a hypocrite. It's Colossians chapter 1, give me verse 15, maybe. Who is the image of the invisible God, give the me first verse 12. That's what I want, though, but give me verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, uh -huh. who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has trans translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Uh huh. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Ooh, watch this. Who is the, who is the image of the invisible it's God? Let's talk about Yahushua. He is the image of the what? Invisible God. So who who they see? When Mo, I mean, when Moses was out there, did they see God? But they sure start worshiping. Because he was the image of the invisible God. That's why the people, Moses left, they like, make us a God. We need another image. Make us a golden calf. We need an image. We need something to represent God. Because we can't see the man. Oh, man, keep going. The firstborn of every creature. Mm -hmm. For by him were all things created, and that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 4. All things were created by the man. Books that he had to express him. All right, he's the image of the invisible God. You know what that make him? An idol. That make y'all sure an idol. All right? But he's the express image. He ain't like these other ones, all right? The dumb, Let me show you the different blind. Huh? I said the dumb, deaf, and the blind. Yeah, he ain't like these other ones. All right? All right? Moses tells us about the other ones. Let's do the right of chapter 4. Give me verse 10. Let's do the right of chapter 4, verse 10. Especially the day that thou hast stood before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when mm -hmm. the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth. Remember Horeb, when they say Horeb and Mount Sinai, those are pretty much the same place, right? It's the same one speaking about an area, one speaking about like a specific place, right? So it's like saying, it's like saying, what is it like saying? It's like saying Las Vegas and Clark County, you know what I mean? It's like, it's the same thing, or it can be the same thing. Keep going. And they may learn to hear, fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. Mm -hmm. And ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven, and dark with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words. You heard the voice of the words. Keep going. But saw no similitude. But you saw what? No similitude. Similitude is like an image. In other words, you didn't see nothing. You heard the voice of the word, but you didn't see a shape. You didn't see a form, right? Keep going. Only ye heard a voice. Uh-huh. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Uh-huh. Remember, that's the ones that Moses broke at first. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land where you go over to possess it. Uh-huh. Take ye therefore a good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. Why do you think Moses had to say that twice? Because he remembers. He remembers when I went up there, I came back down and y'all was that quick to make an image. So in Deuteronomy, you have to understand, Deuteronomy is the second time that he's given out all this law. He's kind of going over everything again, right? We did it three months in. We was at Mount Sinai. We was only three months in. He went over all the law and all that. Then we come down 40 years later. We about to go into the go into the land. A lot of our people didn't die at all. A lot of kids grown up. So he's like, let me go over all this stuff again. So he reminded, he's like, listen, we saw no similitude. 
Keep on talking to them not. And let me remind you, you saw no similitude. He let don't make it. Watch what he say next. Lest ye you corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. The likeness of a male or female. Is y'all sure a male? Yeah. Okay, keep going. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth. Likeness of any beast that is on the earth. The likeness of any winged fowl that flies in the air. Any winged fowl that flies in the air. The likeness of anything that creeps on the ground. Mm -hmm. The likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Uh-huh. And lest thou lift up your eyes unto heaven, and when you see... The sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, should be driven to worship them. Right? You look up in the sky and be like, oh, man, God is in that moon. God is in that star. God is in those suns. Right? Like the Greeks and the, and, and the Romans used to do. Right? They're like, no. Nah. You know what I'm saying? He's like, no, nah, you know, don't do that. You know, that thing don't even make no sense. He said, don't even do it. Don't even do it. Right? You look at you look at these Muslims. What they got is they symbol. Muhammad? Nah. Uh, what's that man name? They fly their flag. It's a moon and a star on it. Oh. All these people. All these people walking in sin. Every every one of them. They claim they claim our book is right. They claim the first part of our book. They say that thing right. They still walk around with a moon, a crescent moon, and a star right there. That represents you, huh? Yeah, okay. Makes sense then. Make a whole lot of sense. Christian, what they got? The cross. Graven image. Fish. All right before that, they had something called a uh, 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 what's it called? A creo, a cryo. Mm. Uh, I want to say cryo, cryo. I feel like I'm saying it wrong right now. But they were before the cross, right? Before the cross, they had a little symbol. This this symbol is something like a cross, but it was a little more to it, right? With a circle around it. Not a circle, but yeah, I think it's like a shape or something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like a little shape around it. You know what I'm saying? It was something like a cross. That was the original one. That was the original Christian symbol. You know what I'm saying? After the Gentiles got to it and they started making 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 a mess out of it, that was the original one. Then it later changed to the cross. All these people, man, you ain't listening to you darn people. The man told you not what to do. And he give he make it clear for us. This is the sign. The man tell us, don't call a man father. Very clearly. And guess what the Catholic call they they, they supreme leader? Pope. Guess what Pope means? Father. father. Right? It's a clear message all the time of what not to do. It's just up to us to say, learn what not to do. Watch who's doing what they're not supposed to do. Very clear. Don't mess with them. All right? But we let these people talk, talk us into anything. Just because we don't know. All right? We let these people talk us into, into having idols around our neck and all this stuff. But, book telling us, don't do it. All right? He told us there was no similitude. In other words, you didn't see anything because God is invisible. Right? Only thing you got is Moses. Then he come back. And then the son come. And he says, all bets are off. This is my expressed image. Y'all been looking for an image? Y'all been looking for an idol? All this stuff? Don't make an idol. I'm going to make your idol. Right? I'm going to make them. You can't. The problem with an idol, I mean, I make some of tea. I'm like, man, tea is a great man. I, I, I mean, I really, I really appreciate tea. Tea is like somebody everybody should follow. So I just, you know, I get to carve in the image of tea. You know what I'm saying? I set it up there like that. Guess what the problem is with that? I made it. I made it. No matter how the great T might be, I made it. It's corrupted. Right? If T is perfect and he makes it, that makes sense. If I'm not where T is, if I'm less than T, and I make something to represent T, by definition, it's going to be less than T, therefore it can't be T. Right? It's corrupted. That's how God did. God said, no, don't you touch it. I'm going to make it. Alright? I'm going to make it. And that's how Yahushua came about. And that's why he can be the expressed image of God. You know what I'm saying? He can be the image of the invisible God. He's the only appropriate idol for us. Does that mean we go make an image of what we think Yahushua look like? No. Why? Why? I mean, I get a picture of Yahushua. I mean, I got a nice black Yahushua too. Dreads and everything. Right? I mean, black, black power. He got a Jamaican flag wrapped around his do rag wrapped around you know what I'm saying? I mean, a good Jesus picture, though. What's wrong with it? You made it. Oh, that's where it go wrong. You show me how you going to. You can make y'all sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and make them. You make them, guess what? You made them. 
When y'all make them, then you good. Most of our God make them, you good. If you got to make them, it's a problem. I don't care who it is. So yeah, y'all wish it was our idol. Legitimate, right? We can do that. Problem is, don't you try to make them. He already been made. He'll come back when the most high God come, and you're going to bow down to him. Because you ain't going to see God. you only going to see him. Right? Just like Moses. All right? None of this would have made sense if Yahushua just came on the scene without Moses doing this stuff. Moses had to do it first. Because he knew Yahushua had to do it. Well, he didn't know, but Yahushua knew he had to do it. All right? What we got? Where we at? Exodus 33, 5. I mean, 11. Give me Hebrews chapter 3 then. It's Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Alright. You look at, man, you look at this. This is, man, this is real different between Moses and the rest of these guys, man. Ain't too many people on Moses level. We just read very clearly. He said, man, he walk in there, everybody looking. You know what I'm saying? That cloud come down, everybody bow down. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, he said, he talked to God. Now he talked to God. Face to face. Face to face. And he said, he had talking to him like he had talking to what? Like a man talks with his friend. I mean, that's special there. When you say, I was talking to God, and we just chopped. I mean, nah, that's, just, that's my man. There. You know what I'm saying? We just chopped. I mean, I was just talking to him like, I mean, that's. That's just my friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking to him just like I talk to my friend. You know what that means? I'm giving you everything. I'm telling you everything. I mean, you ever talk to somebody at work, you don't really mess with them? You know what I'm saying? Just like, yeah, uh-huh. You usually kind of tight-lipped about everything. Just like, mm, yeah, okay. Then you talk to your friend, or, or, or if you, you ever meet somebody outside of work, and they see how you interact with your friends, and you be like, eh. It's different. You can you know they looking at you like, yeah, you acting real different with them. You know, like that with me. It's like, well, these are my friends. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are my friends. Like, what up? We joke, we laugh, you know what I'm saying? I tell them everything about me, because they my friends. You know what I'm saying? It's different now. You know what I'm saying? You you just a coworker. You know what I'm saying? We just got a working relationship, but these are my friends. These are my people. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a good thing. Most I gotta talk to you like that. Let's see how you can get something like that. It's Hebrews chapter three, verse one. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider uh -huh. the apostle and high priest of our profession, Yahushua the Messiah, uh -huh. who was faithful to him that appointed him, also as Moses was faithful in all his house. So listen, why is the Bible comparing Yahushua to Moses? He said, he look, consider Yahushua, the apostle and finisher of our faith. Faith. Alright? Consider him. He was faithful in all God's house. Just like Moses. Right? Just like Moses was. That's what it takes to be God's friend. Be faithful. Alright? Do what the man say. The man tell you to do something, do it. That's how, that's how you want to be God's friend. That's how you do it. Watch. Keep going. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who... Is he who has builded the house has more honor than the house. Uh-huh. Y'all sure say I come on the scene. I gotta outdo Moses. Moses was top for y'all. Alright, I got something for him. I gotta outdo that. You know what I'm saying? He is like, he is like, it's different for a man that was what? Who lived in hell? As Moses in so much. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, in so much as he who has builded the house has more honor than the house. All right? So Moses was the house. Somebody had to build Moses. Right? Somebody had to make Moses. Who made Yahushua? No, he said, no, nah, I made all this stuff. Ain't nobody make me. I made all of this. He said, that's why I have more honor. The house is good. The person who made the house, that's the man. Alright? That's what we're looking at. Alright, keep going. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as Moses a servant. Moses was what? Faithful in all his house. Faithful in all of his house. Grab for me uh, John chapter 15 verse 9. It's John chapter 15 verse 9. Make some quick work. Let's shoot through this real quick. 
John chapter 15, verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. So this is Yahushua talking. Just like the Father loved me, I'm going to love y'all, right? Keep going. Continue ye in my love. Right? All I need you to do is stay in my love, please. Keep going. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. He said, if you do what I tell you to do, you abide in my love. That's simple. And just like who? Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. That thing make a whole lot of sense. You do what God tell you to do, you was friend. You don't think y'all was, was, was a friend to the most high? Alright? Keep going. Watch up. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you, mm -hmm. and that your joy might be full. Mm -hmm. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I loved you. Mm -hmm. Greater love has no man than this. He said, greater love has no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. That he lay down his life for a friend. How, how do I become a friend? Keep going. And ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. You do what I say. You are my friend. You want a relationship with y'all? You want a relationship with y'all with sure? Do what he say. All this other stuff that Christian telling you, you have to have a relationship with God. See, right? You can't be religious. You got to be spiritual. You know what religion is? Who can tell me what religion is? What's the difference between religion and spiritual? Who want to take a crack at that thing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, I mean, just ask. What's the difference between religion? You know what they're going to tell you? Religion is rule. Restrictions. Spiritual. See, spirit, spirit is a relationship with God. You know where they get blown off at? So a commandment. What is that? Rules or is that a relationship? No, no, no. Commandment. That's a rule. Okay. So how do you get a relationship with God? You just got to feel it in your spirit. Okay. So he just tell us. I mean, his word. This is his word. He just told us, you are my friend. Relationship. If. You keep my commandments. Rule. You got to have a rule to get the relationship. They ain't trying to hear that thing. Though. That thing don't even compute to this. Right? But this is the lies that they tell us. Because they don't know what they're talking about. They just run it. You ye worship, ye know not what. You don't know what you worship. You just run in your darn mouth. Right? It's important for us when we look at it. Let's get it from the book. How do you become a friend of God? You're all these people talking about relationship. Find the word relationship in the Bible once. Right? You hear them talking about relationships. So ask them, where did you get it from? What This concept of relationship with God, I'm fine with it. Tell me where you got it from. To me, a relationship is a friend. How do you become a friend? You got to do what he said. got to do what he said. That's a relationship. Right? Ain't no other way to round it. All right? It's a good thing. The most high God looked at Moses as a friend. Because Moses did what he said. Right? Grab James, uh, James, uh, James chapter 2. We can go over another friend. It's a short list in the Bible of men, men the most high God called friends. I'll tell you what they all had in common though. It's James chapter 2, verse like 22. Verse 20. James chapter 2, verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Uh huh. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son up on the altar? He said, "Was he not justified by works when he had offered offering up, uh, you know, what I'm saying his his son on the altar?" Keep going. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was made faith made perfect? Uh huh. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And watch this. And we, he was called the friend of God. He was called a friend of God. Right? Because he did what the man said. Right? His faith created works. He had faith, and from that, works were dead. Right? In other words, he was doing what he said. Watch. Grab Genesis chapter 26. It's Genesis chapter 26. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. 
And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, uh -huh. and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge. Because Abraham obeyed my voice. And kept my charge. Kept my charge. My commandments. My commandments. My statutes. My statutes. And my laws. And my laws. It's clear why the man was a friend. Grab Genesis 18. It's Genesis chapter 18. Or is it 19? No, no Genesis 18 verse 16. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. Uh huh. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Right? He's like, Should I hide from, should I keep this from Abraham? What I'm about to do, should I keep this from Abraham? I mean, you talking, you talking to a, you know what I'm saying, to a friend. You ain't going to keep nothing from a friend. You know what I'm saying? You, gonna, you know what I'm saying? That's your friend. You're going to tell him what's on your heart. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you talking to like, you know what I'm saying? Some person that you just met, somebody at work. There's gonna be a lot of things like, ah, oh, that ain't none of their business. You know what I'm saying? It's just some of this stuff just ain't none of your. I don't know. Some of y'all, y'all, y'all be running y'all darn mouth on these people. Me though, you know what I'm saying? I'm tight lipped with these people. You know what I'm saying? Ain't none of your business over here, right? You look at it. He looking like, should I hide this from Abraham? And look how he rash. Look, this is this is the mind of God. It's important that we understand God's character. Look how God is showing us how He's rationalizing how this is gonna work. Watch this. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. He doesn't. Should I, should I keep this from Abraham? I mean, because I know he's going to become a great and mighty nation. And what else? And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. And I know all the nations of the earth going to end up being blessed in the man. Should I really keep it from him? What else? For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him that they shall keep the way of the Lord. He said, and I know he's going to tell all his people to do exactly what I tell them to do. Should I really keep this from him? Let's see. To do justice uh -huh. in judgment uh -huh. that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their that. sin is grievous. Right after that, he, told, he gave him the whole story. Let me tell you exactly what I'm about to do, Abraham. Because he talked to him like a friend. Right? Grab, go, go back though. Go back to John chapter 15. Where we leave off? Verse 14. This is John chapter 15, verse 14. Watch this. There's one part we didn't read. It's John chapter 15, verse 14. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Mm -hmm. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knows not what his Lord does. Mm -hmm. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. He said all things that what? I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. He said I didn't hide it. That's why God was asking Abraham, like, am I going to hide this from Abraham? That don't make no sense. Do I want to hide this from Abraham? I mean, I know he's going to do what I, uh, I told him to do. He's going to tell his whole family to do what I told him to do. Do I really want to hide that? No, I'm not going to hide it. Let me tell you what's about that. Y'all, you said the same thing. You're my friend if you keep my commandments. Right? No longer, I ain't going to call you no servant no more. You know what I'm going to call you? A friend. You know why? Because all things I heard from my father, I revealed it to you. I ain't going to hide it from you no more. You ain't a servant. You're a friend now. Right? Guess all we got to do. I mean, just to get that wonderful title. Just to have that wonderful relationship. Do what the man say. Alright, just do what the man say. We'll be alright. You know what I'm saying? They ain't only hard in our mind. You know, all these temptations around us. That thing hard in our mind. Alright? We take it on though. When we compare it at the end, we'll look at it and be like, man, that thing was easy. That yet was easy. Yeah. Alright? I mean, you look at it just from the end, you look at it like, oh no, trust me, that was the easy way. You don't even know. A lot of this stuff, we just make it hard. The way of the sinner is hard. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. You know what I'm saying? The only way, the only way you can look at it. You know what I'm saying? That's why, that's why Yahushua is worthy of worship. Right? He's the image of God. Right? Moses, he was worshipped. Right? People didn't worship him. Right? But they saw him as an image of God. Right? They worshiped God when they saw him. 
Alright? Real quick before we get out of here, jump jump to Exodus chapter uh, 34. Alright? So just so we can fast forward. After that, you know what I'm saying? After after uh after uh after Moses, you know what I'm saying, went, spoke to God, he prayed, you know what I'm saying, and basically was just like Forgive us for, uh, of our, our sins, you know what I'm saying? We messed up, you know what I'm saying? Look out for us. And then he asked God, could he, could he see him? You know what I'm saying? He's like, God, I want to see. You know what I'm saying? You said you were going to bring us up. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't even know who you're going to send up with us. Because he's still, Moses still looking at it like, he ain't about to whoop these people butts. So who you who you sending up with us so, so that we can win these wars? And so God didn't really answer him on that. He was like, don't worry about it, I'm going to go. You know what I'm saying? Remember, God just told him, I'm going to send the angel before you. He like, I'm looking, you know what I'm saying? Who you sending? You know what I'm saying? Who is this messenger that you're going to send before us? You know what I'm saying? So, God is like, you know what I'm saying? It eventually turned into a conversation of, can I see you? God was like, you can't see me. You can only see my backside. I'll pass by you real quick. You know what I'm saying? Fast forward to chapter 34. Give me verse 28. It's chapter 34, verse 28. Exodus chapter 34, verse 28. Right? After that, Moses went back up onto the mount with God. Right? So he went back onto the mount with God. And that's where we pick up right here. And he said, and he, and he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. So this is another 40 days and 40 nights. So remember, he did the first one, came down, people made a golden calf. He wilded out. Some people died. Now he's praying. Went to the table, the, 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 the tabernacle, the uh, tent of tabernacles. And then after that, he go back up another 40 days and 40 nights. He is there. What else? And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. And he did neither eat bread nor drink water. Mm -hmm. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand. When he came down from the mount, that Moses was not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. Mm -hmm. And when his, Aaron his face did what? Was shining. Moses' face was shining when he talked with him. Watch this. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. They were afraid to even come near the man. Keep going. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him. And Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. And until Moses, Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. All right. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went until speak with him. All right. So Moses' skin was shining after he got done talking to God for that second round. And he went down to speak to the people. You know what I'm telling me? People didn't see him like he is a God. He was looking at him like, what God have to say to us now, Moses? Moses tell him, that's what you got to do. Face shining. So you got to put a veil over it. You know what I'm saying? So the people don't get freaked out. They looking like, man, this is crazy, All right? This is everything that the Most High God do to establish himself. Now he did it in the Son, Yahushua. All this, everything that we looked at is testifying to Yahushua. It had to happen that way. That way when Yahushua come on the scene, you can say, oh, yeah, it's nothing new. All right? Everything that we see, a lot of the stuff that we see from Yahushua, we didn't even recognize what was going on. I have no idea why he was in the Mount of Transfiguration and it says that he starts shining. Right? I have no idea why that happened. I'll tell you why it happened. Because it happened to Moses. Right? We look at it, man. It's, it's important for us to understand there's a route for us to be a friend of God. There's a route for us to be faithful in this, in this house. We have the blueprint laid in front of us. The only thing we got to do, do what the man tells us to do. Pay attention to the word. Keep it in memory. Practice. Alright? We do that, we'll be alright. Any questions? Let's pray out.